Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled LT Spice Demonstration of a Vibrating Capacitor and its application as a non-contact voltage sensor. There is a relevant video to this presentation. Here is the link, and I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. Now, the issue that I'm bringing up in this presentation is how to measure a voltage on a conducting surface without touching it. So suppose I have here a body which a, with a conducting surface which has a voltage on it, that is there's some voltage referred to ground. I like to measure the voltage on this body, on this surface. One way to do it is to put an electrode and placing it at the distance, say D, this electrode will have an area A and I'm connecting it to ground by a resistor RL. Now at steady state, there will be no current, so it's a static situation. So there is really not much you can get out of it. However, if we move this electrode back and forth and forming the so-called vibrating capacitor, because there is a capacitance here and we are sort of vibrating it, then as it turns out, and we'll see it in a minute, there be a current and this current will be actually proportional to the voltage on this surface. So the objective of this presentation is really, first of all, to develop a model of this situation, of this system, and then to run it on LT spies and to show how it behaves. So if we have a capacitance, and then the, cap the value of this capacitance is the dielectric constant times the surface area, this will be the smallest area here, divided by the distance here, and then the charge of that will be accumulated on the surface, here the positive and the negative charge, will be equal to the capacitance times the voltage, of course, across this capacitor. Now, if I move this electrode back and forth, let's assume it's a sinusoidal movement, I can sort of express it as a, some distance with some perturbation here. K is a small number, and here is the movement as sine omega t. So the capacitance at any given time can be expressed as the nominal value divided by this uh, expression 1 plus k sine omega t, making it a time-dependent capacitor. So this is the system we are talking about. Now the current is the derivative of the charge, and the charge is the capacitance times the voltage. Now in this case, both the capacitance and the voltage are going to be time dependent. Well, the capacitance is time dependent because we are moving the electrode back and forth, and the voltage will be time dependent because as we move it, there will be current, and therefore the voltage drop on the capacitor will change. So therefore, I have to take the derivative of this product. And here is the derivative. This is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage plus the voltage times the derivative of the capacitance. Now I can model this equation as a dependent current source equal to this expression. That is this C sub T and then the VDT plus the voltage and the derivative of the capacitor. So this will be the model of a vibrating capacitor. So now I can model this unit, uh, this uh, time-dependent capacitor, which then is replaced by this current source or dependent current source. And obviously I can then run it on a circuit simulator, like for example, LT spice. So here is an example. So what I have here, first of all, is a dependent current source defined by this equation. Now, the problem is that LT spines recognizes variables like voltage and current, but here we need to take a derivative of a capacitance. So to overcome this issue, I am coding or emulating the capacitance as a voltage. And here it is. This is the voltage which represent the capacitance at any given time. It is defined as one picofarad times this voltage, and this voltage is now is the perturbation, that is the distance. 
So this is the distance, this is one is the nominal, and then plus this uh, 10 to the minus two is the magnitude of this deviation. And then I'm assuming a frequency of 100 kilohertz. So this is the deviation, this is the D. This is now a voltage that represent the capacitance. So now I can take the derivative of this voltage. So the expression of this dependent current source will be the value of the capacitance, again, emulated by this voltage, times the derivative of the voltage across this uh, current source, plus the voltage across the current source, and the derivative of this value of this parameter, which represents the capacitance, which is a function of time, due to this uh, expression here. And here is an example of an output. We see here the capacitance, time-dependent capacitance. It's a one picofarad, which is then moving plus minus uh, 1% here. And then we have here the output voltage. This is the voltage here across the resistor. Here it is, and this is in fact the current of the resistor. So this is one particular point, and we see that this works pretty good. Now what is really happening here is that when we have this perturbation, the charge is changing, and a change of charge means current, and this current then will be proportional to the voltage and of course the magnitude of this uh, deviation. Now we can run now a step type of a simulation, and I'm demonstrating here two things. First of all, the dependence on the voltage, which should be, of course, linear. And then the dependence on the distance, d. So to, for the voltage, I've defined this as a parameter that I'm going to sweep. And then also, I've added here a parameter, dd. The nominal value is 1. This is for the nominal distance. And then if I step it between smaller value and larger value, this will sort of emulate the case in which I'm changing the distance between the electrode and the surface. So let's first of all have a look at the dependence on the voltage. And as we would expect, it's a linear dependency. And here is the dependence on the distance. And then the response is one over the distance. Let me say a few words, however, on the, this expression. It is important to realize that in this case, we do need the two terms. As shown in the video that I have referenced, you can actually use this type of an expression also for a voltage-dependent capacitor, to model a voltage-dependent capacitor. You can do it also with one term if you use the derivative capacitance, okay, or the small signal capacitance. However, in this case, since the capacitance is time dependent, you must have it in this expression. Now, if you wouldn't have it, and you'll have only this term, then the value of the current will always be zero. The reason is that without the current, there is no voltage drop on the capacitor, and with no voltage drop, there is no derivative of the voltage, and therefore this will be stuck at zero current. And this, of course, is incorrect. So in this case, you do have to have the two terms when you are talking about a time-dependent capacitor. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.